Okay, good evening, uh, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce our uh, speaker today, Afsan Ali, who is a postdoctoral appointee in the Data Science and Learning uh, Division at Argonne National Lab. He's indeed uh, one of our own. He obtained his master's degree in computer science from Koch University, advised by uh, Özne Hoca. He recently completed his PhD from the University of Nevada, and he has worked at IBM and uh, Nokia Bell Labs. His research interests include machine learning, uh, cloud computing, big data, and uh, HPC. And today he will talk about their efforts towards scalable and adaptive machine learning uh, design and training. Thank you, uh, Hassan, and the stage is yours. Uh, thank you, Aykul Ruja, for the invitation and the kind introduction. Uh, I'm really grateful for, for, to you and Kuzun Ruja for the invitation. Uh, now, uh, I'll, in this talk, I will talk about autonomous and efficient machine learning system. Uh, in this talk, basically, this is part of my uh, dissertation for my PhD. I will talk about two different frameworks, one for inference and one for uh, training. So without further ado, let's start. Uh, so we all know that machine learning has gained much popularity in almost every field from uh, automation robotics uh, even interplanetary traveling uh, like applications like neural architecture uh, search nature language processing face recognition these are the applications we use on daily basis in our phones so like machine learning has been accessible almost everywhere these days so it is it is necessary to have efficient systems which could support modern state-of-the-art applications uh, and, and we can solve these sophisticated challenging problems such as autonomous driving, uh, natural language processing, translation, all of these different problems are related to machine learning. So to solve these problems, we need sophisticated machine learning systems and machine learning uh, frameworks. So some of the characteristics before I start, let's take a look at some of the characteristics of modern machine learning systems. The first one is support for uh, modern machine learning applications. As I mentioned, uh, we are trying to solve very complex and challenging problems. It is very important to uh, solve. Uh, it is very important that modern machine learning frameworks or systems should be able to support these complex solutions. Another key characteristic is scalability. Uh, we have observed almost 90% of the data we have right now is generated in past two years. So that means we should be able to utilize this data to train machine learning models for efficient uh, uh, recommendation systems, efficient prediction systems. So to enable all of these things, we need to have scalable machine learning systems. And portability is another uh, key characteristic of machine learning system. We live in an era where we have diverse set of hardware configurations from CPU, GPU, TPU, IPU, like we have accelerators coming on every other day. That means our system should be able to port between these different hardware configurations as well as different operating systems as well. And reproducibility is another critical, critical issue uh, in machine learning. For example, when we train machine learning models in a, a development environment, it is much uh, different than a uh, different than a uh, uh, it's much different than a, a, a production environment where data changes. That means based on that one, your model uh, performance will also change as well. So uh, to to basically uh, to basically have a, a consistent performance we should be able to reproduce the results we get in a dev environment uh, in, in a production environment as well so ease of deployment is uh, also important because when the machine learning systems are easy to deploy machine learning engineers uh, are, are able to focus mainly on developing algorithms rather than learning underlining uh, uh, underlining uh, characteristics of the systems so there are a few frameworks which are available and widely used and developed for used for developing machine learning algorithms, such as PyTorch, FM, TensorFlow, and MXNet, which are widely used and developed for machine learning systems. Uh, these support some of these characteristics, but not all of them are fulfilled. So before going to the details, let's take a look at the uh, machine learning development lifecycle, which includes data pre-processing, which is a data mining technique for extracting the key information from the raw data. And then we have the model building phase where machine, machine learning, learning architecture as well as hyperparameters are uh, tuned. So in this, uh, this particular phase can be done uh, 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 automatically, such as neural architecture search, where models of different sizes and, and shapes with different hyperparameters are deployed in a serial or parallel manner to train the models, or, or it can be done uh, uh, in, through a trial and error method 
by uh, just deploying the models with different parameters through experience. Then we have the training phase where once the model is developed, the trained model, uh, the model is uh, the, uh, deployed for training using the training data. And finally, when the model is finished training, it is deployed for serving on a cloud-based environment. In this particular talk, in the first part of the presentation, I will uh, focus on building and training part of the machine learning uh, development lifecycle. And then in the later half, I will talk about serving machine learning systems. So in an, uh, to, for a scalable machine learning system, we often employ distributed learning, which is basically consists of three different layers. The first layer is data layer, where the data is partitioned into disjoint sets and each set is assigned to a worker a worker is basically a, 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 is, is a collection workers are basically a collection of uh, computing nodes and each uh, each of these workers is assigned a disjoint set which is it utilized for training the model and after every iteration every worker will update these parameters to the parameter server which is responsible for aggregating these parameters and then distributing among all the workers this task can be done synchronously or asynchronously, asynchronously based on the requirement of the algorithm or the systems. So there are, uh, due to the wide popularity of uh, machine learning applications and deployments on cloud-based uh, systems, uh, cloud service providers have different offerings for supporting machine learning systems. Some of these offerings we will talk about in now. So the first one is infrastructure as a service which offers virtual machines with wide range of computational uh, capabilities. It provides on-demand resources with time varying cost models. In this environment, users are fully responsible for deploying, managing, and provisioning the compute resources based on their requirements. Although it is very flexible option for uh, practitioners, extensive resource management overhead and lack of scalability uh, support make uh, infrastructure service solutions less ideal for training machine learning models, especially for machine learning experts with limited system expertise. Uh, another key solution which is offered by uh, cloud service providers is a container as a service paradigm that allows users to develop and manage application constraints across clusters. Container as a service provides a container-based virtualization. Uh, the example of commercial container as a service systems are Amazon Elastic Container Service and Amazon Kubernetes Service that provides inf uh, interfaces to develop, deploy, and manage containers. The focus of these services usually is ease of use for containers, although it is possible to scale the containers according to the application needs, uh, for example, or using auto scalers. Uh, it, it adds an extra layer of complexity to, to the system, which is not uh, straightforward to uh, implement. To address the challenges of uh, uh, running machine learning tasks in infrastructure as a service and a container as a service environment, uh, cloud service providers have recently introduced machine learning as a service platform, which are specifically designed for training and inference uh, st uh, uh, systems of machine learning systems. So uh, basically machine learning systems are based on pool of virtual machines with varying computational and communication capabilities shared storage for training uh, data and some of the degree of scalability. However, the selection of the underlying resources is to the users based on their requirements, which can impact both the training speed and the cost. Dynamic resource requirement during different phases of machine learning development lifecycle requires dynamic resource provisioning for cost effectiveness and training speed. But current machine learning as a service uh, platforms do support some some dynamic resource provisioning to some extent, but it's not fully dynamic, which basically poses significant challenges for machine learning developers to take care of these uh, underlining system requirements and develop these solutions uh, so that it could support dynamic resource requirements. So the question is, are all these offerings by cloud service providers uh, enough to support modern machine learning systems and machine learning techniques. To, to answer this question, let's look, take a look at some of the, uh, the key uh, or, or the, some of the state of the art machine learning techniques used in uh, nowadays for training machine learning models. So first of all, uh, as I mentioned before, neural architectures is one of the key techniques in machine learning development life cycle where models are trained or models are developed through automatic automatically deploying models of different sizes and, and hyperparameters in a serial and parallel fashion. So in this uh, neural architecture search, due to different sizes of the machine learning uh, models, the resource requirement changes significantly over time as well. That means either you have to uh, uh, provision resources for the minimum requirement of all the, uh, all the models you are gonna be deploying over the time, or you can just deploy the 
resources to the maximum resource requirement and that way you will be able to improve your performance throughout the uh, throughout the training process but the problem here is if you lim limit the resources you might run out of the resources for the larger models and if you provision for the largest model you will be wasting resources throughout the time so that's not an ideal solution that basically is and none of the existing machine learning systems are capable of supporting such a system uh, su such a dynamic resource requirement Another key uh, technique is dynamic batching. In dynamic batching, uh, batch sizes are varied over the training process as the training, uh, uh, for example, like it, it starts with a smaller training, a smaller batch size. And as the training progresses towards conversion, the batch size increases to improve the training speed by improving the throughput. In this case as well, you have to either set the uh, training uh, resources to either the maximum capacity or the minimum capacity. If you set it to the maximum capacity, the user will not be able to uh, uh, reap the uh, uh, cost effectiveness benefits or if, if the user sets it to the minimum resource requirement, it will not be able to reap the benefits of training improvement over the time with the increasing batch size. And then we have another uh, technique, which is online learning, where, which this paradigm, machine learning models are trained over the time with newly coming data to up for up to date model, uh, up to date uh, models. This is very critical when you have a production system running uh, production system running machine learning uh, uh, algorithms where newly data is always uh, utilized to train the model systems to predict uh, the uh, to, to provide predictions up to date predictions. So in this case, there are two different ways of doing uh, uh, model training. The first one is uh, since the model training is not known in advance of when the new data will arrive and how long it will take to train the model. Either you can resource to provision the resources for a model for 24 seven, which would be again, waste of resources. If you do not want to do that, it will put the burden of the uh, machine learning uh, more, uh, engineers to start the cluster, stop the cluster, or assigning cluster whenever the data arrives. So all of these different techniques are posing uh, uh, different challenges, which requires low level system knowledge. And if the resources are not uh, assigned uh, efficiently, it could lead to uh, higher uh, training time or inefficient resource utilization or higher cost. So keeping these in uh, challenges in mind, uh, let's take a look at some of the goals for uh, machine learning, ideal machine learning system. For an ideal machine learning system, elastic, uh, it should be elastic. What that means is with the change in resource requirement, you're able to dynamically change in the uh, assign the resources or uh, or relocate the resources right next we have the cost effectiveness what we want to do is like it's a long running process machine learning training part take and take up to like days or weeks so it could incur a lot of cost and we usually choose gpus or cpus so it could be very uh, costly if, if the resources are not uh, efficiently uh, efficiently allocated so to have an effective a cost effective solution we need to be able to assign the resources efficiently and then we saw that autonomic resource management is a very key uh, uh, criteria for an ideal machine learning system as as we can see from the previous slide that various machine learning techniques required uh, different kind of uh, resource management techniques so autonomous resource management is also very important then we have ease of deployment so that machine learning developers can only focus on uh, development related tasks rather than uh, spending time on learning underlining details for develop uh, deploying the machine learning systems and then finally we have uh, uh, support for state of the art machine learning applications so that we can deploy and develop these complex solutions for these uh, sophisticated challenging problems uh, uh, which we are trying to solve through machine learning systems keeping these in mind so before you go may i ask something else huh? Yes. Uh, so for this ideal system, uh, you said that containers are not uh, appropriate, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so when I see this list, uh, I couldn't understand actually what was the problem about containers, because it seems like everything is isn't it possible in containers. Mm -hmm. Just All right. so the problem with the containers, you need some kind of scalability environment. Like you should be able to dynamically update the container allocation because. As you see, like, you know, in the previous slide, we saw that when you are doing neural architecture search, right, you can definitely deploy hundreds of containers uh, to, to deploy like hundreds of different networks of different sizes and shapes. But do, like you do, you don't know exactly how much resources each uh, container would require, how much memory you should allocate, how much computing resources you should allocate to train all of these models, because we do not know in advance how much resources we would be requiring to train all of these models in advance. Uh, but all these things uh, are 
aren't, aren't all these things are also available in container I mean settings like changing the uh, requirements resources memory etc yeah yeah but you do not know in advance either you have to be involved uh, all the time throughout the development process to change these parameters or you will not be able to reap the benefits of dynamic resource provisioning so what what the the bottom line here is like you, know, you can use container solutions definitely definitely but the problem here is like as you go along your requirements change your computational requirements change your memory allocation requirements change so you have to be able to adopt to these solutions and you do not know in advance like how much uh, resources you would be requiring to train all of these models okay thank you So uh, keeping this in mind, uh, serverless computing such as AWS Lambda has emerged as a, an autonomic and scalable technique in cloud computing uh, and serverless computing basically simplifies the deployment process of machine, uh, any application rather not just machine learning because the users are only supposed to provide the function code and the cloud service providers take care of the deployment process and, 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 uh, and, and it, it, the user is not supposed to provision the resources. Another key advantage in serverless computing is you can basically change the computational capability by just changing the memory allocate, allocated memory size. What that means is like you can, in, if you want to have a larger computational power, you can just simply increase the memory value without turning on and off a container or without turning on and off a, uh, a virtual machine. And you can just basically change without even uh, turning on and off in any container. So that, that basically makes it very feasible for training, uh, feasible for uh, updating the resources on the fly. Another key advantage is, is dynamically uh, elasticity. So basically you can have as many functions as you want uh, by invoking functions dynamically. So that means like it can scale dynamically without the intervention of the end user. That is another key characteristic which could be beneficial for using serverless computing for uh, machine learning applications. And then finally, uh, we have the uh, paper use cost model. In this case, you only pay for uh, the functions when you are actually running the function and you are charged for the exact duration to the millisecond value. And that is also another beneficial thing about container or serverless computing for uh, machine learning applications. Although all of these uh, different characteristics are very beneficial, there are some challenges associated with uh, utilizing serverless computing for uh, uh, machine learning applications. The first of all, uh, majority of the, uh, the serverless uh, offerings by commercial cloud service providers are stateless in nature, while on the other hand, machine learning uh, applications are highly uh, uh, stateless uh, process, which means you have to keep the state of your, uh, 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 your, your process, uh, training process after every iteration so that you can keep the process running. So that is why that is a basic challenge of running machine learning application in a stateless environment. Another key challenge is since uh, current serverless platforms do not offer enough storage, which basically, for example, Amazon AWS Lambda only offers 512 kilobytes to store the data, which is not efficient or enough to enough storage to store your training data. And that another uh, that is another challenge for running machine learning applications in this environment. And then we have non-trivial initialization, right? Every time you start a new serverless function, it takes some time to deploy the code. Uh, I, although it's not that significant, but over the time, if you add one second after every iteration, and then you have thousands of iterations, that means it can lead up to thousands of seconds that can add up to a large value, which is not uh, desirable in, in this scenario. We want to finish the training as soon as possible without wasting any additional time. And then we have another key challenge, outbound only network, which means once the serverless functions are started, you can communicate from outside, you can communicate from the function toward outside world, but you cannot communicate from outside to the serverless function. But that, and, and in, in, in machine learning training, every worker should be able to communicate with all the other workers so that they can, they can transmit the parameters to all the other workers and they can aggregate the parameters that they can update the model. And then finally, uh, uh, user-centric deployment. Since serverless provides dynamic resources, basically you can go from one worker to hundreds of workers, and then you can assign memory from one megabyte to 10 gigabytes. So there's a huge search space. So if you want to have a user-centric deployment, such as like if you have a training budget and you want to finish the training in one hour, regardless of the training cost, you can you have a large search space to search for to figure out the optimal resources. And the other scenario could be you have a, a constraint on, on, on the cost that you want to finish the training in, within $100, but you can have as much time as you want then you would have to basically explore all of, all of the search space to figure out the exact resources to run this training process. 
So all of these are the key challenges in a, a serverless environment. And there are some current solutions which are utilizing serverless platforms which address some of these challenges, Silent being one of them. This uh, paper was published in 2019 in Infocom. And basically, they have fixed two different problems. The first one is the communication problem. The other one is the storage problem. Let's take a look at the storage problem. The first one, uh, the storage problem, to so solve the storage problem, they are proposing to use uh, an object store, uh, which is basically uh, a, 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 a storage system offered by Amazon AWS as S3 and used for storing unstructured data. So what they are doing is they are storing the training data in these object stores and every worker will basically get the training data on, after every iteration from these training stores and then start the training process. And after every iteration, after every iteration every worker will upload their since they cannot communicate with each other they will upload the gradients or the parameters to the cloud storage and after uh, all the workers are done up uploading the gradients they will every worker will download all the other gradients from all the other workers so one key challenge or one key problem in this particular solution is that as we increase the number of workers our download time will be dominated because if, for example, if you have 10 workers and each worker is uploading 10, 100, giga, 100 megabytes of uh, uh, data, the upload time will not be impacted if you increase the number of workers. But on the other hand, your download time will be significantly imp imp impacted by as you increase the number of workers. For example, for only for 10 workers, you have to download one gigabyte of data to do the aggregation on locally on every worker. Another key challenge is we have limited bandwidth, so we will not be able to optimize this process to understand the challenges or the uh, identify the challenges we ran some experiments using uh, BERT medium which is a natural language processing model and we are on the uh, left hand side we have the plot where we are comparing the communication time and computation time as a function of number of workers as we can see as we increase the number of workers the red line is dropping which shows the computation time and the uh, the dashed blue line is increasing which shows the communication time so this shows that after 40 workers we go from uh, after 20 workers as we increase number of workers from 20 to 40 our communication time becomes the a dominant factor compared to our com communication time which is not ideal that means your computation resources are waiting for your uh, communication to be updated and then we have also a breakdown of upload time and download time in this case we can see as we increase the number of workers our upload time remains constant because we are every worker is updating fixed number of data a fixed amount of data to the s3 while on the other hand as we increase the number of, number of workers our download data increases as well linearly so that means our overall download time is increasing as well so there's another solution to fix this problem. In this case, instead of uh, they have improved the communication protocols, rather than uploading the models uh, to uh, the shared storage or object store, they propose to use a Redis-based cluster. So Redis is a key in-memory key value store, which can provide fast response time, right? So that's, that's one of the things we want to have which means like, you know, you want to be able to upload and download the data as fast as possible. And, and another solution they did was rather than, uh, uh, rather than uh, you know, aggregating the weights locally on every function, they outsource this to the parameter server, which is responsible for aggregating the weights. So one of the key challenges in this uh, particular method is, again, you have to manage the parameter server. And the other thing is as you increase the number of workers, your parameter server becomes the bottleneck since you can scale your uh, uh, number of workers to hundreds of workers. So that is another challenge. So we did the same experiment uh, in this case as well to compare the communication and computation cost. So we can see in this case, as we increase the number of workers, uh, BERT small, in this case, we are using BERT small, which is relatively smaller model compared to BERT medium. And as you can see, as we increase the number of workers, are we see the similar trends where communication time is increasing compared to the computation time. And as uh, and, and we, when we compare the upload time and download time, we can see that our download time is significantly smaller. But as we increase the number of workers, it's it's significantly smaller than uh, 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 Siren, which was the previous approach. But it still increases because of the bottleneck imposed by the uh, parameter server. Uh, okay, so the uh, so to, to, we can see that there are some challenges in these existing systems. So let's take a look at like you know what can we do to improve these challenges. Right, the first of all we have some challenges associated with let's recap all of the challenges the first one is storage management if you want to if you want to utilize serverless uh, machine serverless for machine learning training we need to have a management system which could uh, uh, like you know have a management store storage management system such as s3 or redis or whatever we want to use an external storage for communication and storing the data 
Next thing is outbound only networks. We will not be able to communicate with other workers. We need a, a new communication mechanism, which would improve the overall communication time so that we will not be bottleneck. Uh, we will not have face, face these bottlenecks as we increase the number of workers. And then we have non-trivial initializations. Basically what that means, we, do, we should not be restarting a function after one iteration that would basically lead to, uh, lead to uh, longer uh, training times. And then it should be able to support the user-centric deployments. And then finally, we should be able to support state-of-the-art machine learning solutions. So based on these, all of these challenges, let's, we will try to solve each one of the challenges one by one. Let's take a look at, first of all, the cloud uh, uh, storage system, right? Storage uh, uh, problems. So first of all, like cloud service providers offer different kinds of storage mechanisms and just storage uh, services. We can use any one of those based on their uh, pros and cons. And let's take a look at some of those uh, storage systems. The first one is the file systems. So almost every cloud service provider provides some kind of elastic file system, which could grow as you have, like, you know, as you increase the number of storage, it can automatically adjust the size of your uh, files. And it's usually used for unstructured data. But the problem here is as you, uh, th there are like certain uh, protocols running in the background, such available for availability and consistency, which makes them slower in, in response time, which are not ideal for our parameter storage. It can be stored, it can be used for storing the training data, but for parameter storage, it's not an ideal solution because we do not want to store the data for the longer duration and we want faster response time when we are accessing these uh, parameters after every iteration. And the next uh, storage system is object store, such as S3. Again, these are uh, used for storing the unstructured data, which could also be uh, a, a challenge for uh, storing the, uh, again, like, you know, it can uh, store the data, but it also provides consistency and availability and all of these different uh, uh, protocols running in the background, which could lead to longer training time, which is not ideal in our case. And then we have different databases, which are basically, which incur higher cost and used for storing data in the longer term. In our case, we do not want to store the data. We, as soon as, soon as we consume the parameters after every iteration, we do not need to store the data long-term. So that's why it's, I, I feel uh, databases are an overkill for storing the uh, uh, parameters and it can also incur higher cost. But finally, we have in-memory stores which could be ideal solution for uh, utilizing or uh, exchanging the parameters between workers because these have a uh, higher uh, response time, better response time, improved response time, and they can be basically start and stop uh, at any instant of the time that we, we will be able to easily manage these systems. So our solution basically is to use in-memory key value stores as well as use uh, a container as a service solutions so, so that we can only utilize these containers when we are uh, uh, running the training process and when we are uh, updating the gradients and we can keep the containers uh, turned off when we do not use these services that way we will be able to take advantage of uh, a container as a service as well as we will not be incurring additional costs when we are not utilizing those uh, solutions to next thing we want to optimize the overall communication time for that we proposed a new hierarchical aggregation mechanism so our mechanism is uh, divided into two different phases the first one is the map phase so every worker after it finishes the uh, training iteration it will upload the gradients as a full file in other uh, previous uh, approaches we saw so what we propose is instead of uploading the entire gradients as one uh, whole matrix or one file we will shard the per gradients into smaller chunks and every worker will upload these chunks into the storage system. For example, worker one will upload M shards to the storage and each worker will do the same thing. After every worker is done, we will then further make every worker as a shard aggregator basically. So every worker will pick one shard of all the other workers and then it will download it and uh, perform the mean operation and, and aggregate the uh, gradients of all the workers. For example, in this case, shard aggregator one, which is basically worker one of in the second step will basically reduce all the first, uh, first uh, uh, chunks of all the other workers into one, uh, one piece. And this happens parallelly in all the other workers as well. That way we will be able to concurrently utilize the bandwidth of all the functions. And that way we will be able to speed up this aggregation mechanism. So once we have that, we have the uh, shards, aggregated shards on each worker. Next, we need to uh, basically form the global model. For that, we will 
further every worker will further upload these shards into global uh, storage and then further every worker will further download these to form the global model that way we will be able to speed up the overall uh, communication process by uploading and downloading the entire uh, training data uh, sorry yeah uh, the training parameters next we have to basically answer the user centric deployment process so what we are proposing to use is a bayesian optimized based model which basically takes the training constraints such as either training budget or, or training time as an input and it will also take the training parameters such as batch size because through batch size we will decide how much parallelism we require in, in terms of scale out and scale uh, scale up so it will take these two parameters as input and it will observe the training for a few iterations basically what that means is it will first of all scale up basically increase the number of workers and then observe the training process and then also it will scale out which means increasing the memory allocation of each worker and then it will also observe the training time and based on that one vision optimization will be able to have a complete picture uh, in few iterations of how much training performance will change with these parameters and the relationship between these parameters and the training time and it will be able to predict the uh, uh, our uh, able to predict overall uh, 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 computation time or, or per iteration training time and that we will be able to either meet the user uh, specified constraints either uh, cost or training time right and then we have it can be done in a, in a lightweight manner in an offline and online manner but uh, when you are running uh, a, a, a task such as uh, uh, batching, uh, dynamic batching or neural architecture search or online learning, these, this task should be done online because you want to optimize the parameters of the, your, uh, your uh, deployment configurations dynamically adaptive to your resource requirements. So overall, uh, our Bayesian optimization based model will take the constraints as a well model parameters and it will give us a training scale, which is number of workers as well as training a memory allocation for each worker. So basically Bayesian optimization strikes a balance between extrapolation and exploration to figure out like, you know, what parameters should be used exactly for uh, training parameters. Next, basically, now that we have seen all the other parameters, we want to see the overview of the serverless machine learning framework, which we are proposing, our, uh, which we call a SMILT serverless machine learning training framework. It is basically consistent of uh, uh, an end user, end client, which, is, uh, which has a task scheduler responsible for uh, uh, starting and keeping track of the training progress, such as number of epochs, number of uh, iterations. And, and we have the resource scheduler, which is responsible for keeping track of the number of workers running. Fault tolerance, basically, it also takes care of if there is a worker which is failing throughout the training process, it will be able to restart the training process as well. The end client is also responsible for deploying the user deploy, user de, uh, user defined code and training data. First of all, the user will provide the code as well as the training data to our end client, which will further upload it to the storage system. And then uh, our uh, task scheduler will uh, assign the memory as well as will start the training process by invoking the workers and each worker basically first of all fetches the training data as well as code from the storage system and it will start the training process so in the before we start the training process we have the mini batch buffer which is responsible for uh, getting the training data for each worker and we are assigning each worker a certain specific chunks of data and the task schedule is responsible for assigning the, uh, the these chunks and after every uh, epoch it will basically shuffle the, these indices and it will uh, tell each worker which uh, exactly data to download locally so each, will, each worker will download that exact data that way we will be able to optimize the local storage of each worker and then the mini batch will provide these training data to the trainer which is responsible for training the models and then uh, after every iteration the shard aggregator will get the training parameters for the trainer shard the gradients and then it will present to the shard aggregator which will aggregate the shards and upload it to the global uh, storage which is parameter store and then we have the global aggregator which is responsible for downloading these parameters from the gradient uh, from the storage system and it will aggregate these shards all right, so we implemented this mechanism or, or this framework in, 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 in AWS Lambda. And then to show that our platform, our, uh, our proposed framework is uh, platform agnostic, we uh, evaluated the performance using three different frameworks, TensorFlow, MXNet, and PyTorch. And we also evaluated using different machine learning models for used for different applications, such as ResNet and ResNet 18 and 50, which are vision-based application, BERT, small and medium are 
uh, language-based models and Atari is uh, a reinforcement learning-based method. So this shows that our proposed framework can support various applications uh, from uh, various application types. And then we also compare the uh, performance of our proposed system uh, in, in uh, uh, compared to Cyrus and Siren as well. So first of all, we evaluated the end-to-end -end training time here. In this case, we are evaluating the performance using two different uh, machine learning models, which is ResNet 18 and Atari reinforcement learning. And ResNet 18, we utilized, uh, uh, we run ResNet 18 using TensorFlow and Atari R is running using PyTorch. So one of the common things we can see here is that the scalability, like as we increase the number of workers, we can see scalability of these different frameworks changing. In our case, we can see as we increase the number of workers, it can go up to 200 workers uh, and maybe beyond, but uh, we are only showing here up to 200 workers. In the case of uh, Siren, it can only scale up to, in the case of ResNet 18, it can scale up to 100 workers. In the case of uh, Cyrus, it can scale up to 150 for the ResNet 18. On the, in the case of Atari RL, since we have higher number of communication uh, patterns, uh, the performance of both Cyrus and Siren is even worse because uh, we have a large amount of data being transferred between different workers since each worker is running the uh, running the simulation and they are transferring the simulation data to the centralized location that basically results in higher communication uh, overheads. So this basically leads to poor performance in Cyrus and Siren. So basically, based on these results, we can uh, uh, we can uh, we can infer that this, uh, our proposed uh, framework can outperform Cyrus and Siren in terms of uh, communication time. Next, we basically uh, did uh, a comparison of cost in terms of per iteration comparison cost for both of these models. So one of the is a function of number of workers. One of the things we can observe that the cost has the similar patterns uh, as we increase the number of workers, our cost is increasing as well. The main reason uh, why cost is increasing in Cyrus and Siren is because as we increase the number of workers, our communication time is increasing, leading to lo longer duration of the functions, which basically is uh, increasing the core co overall cost. Since serverless are charged based on the duration of the function you are running, this leads to higher cost as we increase the number of workers for Cyrus and Siren. On the other hand, in, in, in case of serverless machine learning training framework, our overall cost is constant as we saw in the previous slide that as we increase the number of workers, our overall uh, training time was constant throughout the training process. That basically keeps the cost constant as we increase the number of workers. At some point when we have larger communication overhead, where for example, at, at some point we go to 500 workers, at, uh, maybe our communication time would be much higher than our, our, our computation time. That At that cost, at that time, may, maybe like it's a, a serverless machine learning training will also face a similar problem, but we can see that uh, it can right now support larger machine learning models without any major bottlenecks. So uh, next, we compared the communication or iteration for all of these uh, models. So in this case, we can see as we increase the number of workers, again, our overall communication time is increasing. The key advantage of uh, in our case is due to this shows the effectiveness of our proposed uh, communication mechanism, which improves the overall communication time as we increase the number of workers. So that 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 basically is uh, that shows that our our proposed serverless platform can can outperform Cyrus and Siren in terms of communication time as well. Next, we did uh, evaluate the performance of a user-centric uh, uh, part of our proposed model. So here in this case, we have two different scenarios. The first one here right now, we have a budget of a one hour training time and we want to minimize the training cost, right? So we can see that uh, on the left-hand side, we have the time on the y-axis, and then uh, on the x-axis, we have different uh, mo uh, the, all these key frameworks. We, uh, particularly for serverless machine learning training, we can see there is a purple bar on top, which shows the profiling time and profiling cost, which means in the beginning, it will uh, explore and extrapolate the, the existing framework for different configurations, such as different number of workers and different communication allocation, and figure out the optimal uh, configuration for this particular uh, deployment to meet the SLO requirements or, or the budget requirements, which is one hour and finish the training within that budget. And then it will uh, it assign that numbers. And on the, uh, on the right hand side, we can see that not only we are within the time constraint, we are also minimizing the cost compared to 
both silent and silent as well. This shows that we can our user centric deployment can uh, can achieve the first scenario, which is time budget. And the next scenario we have here is we have a cost budget where we are putting a budget of fifty dollars and we want to minimize the training time. Right. So on the left hand side we have the cost plot. Again, we uh, can see our uh, serverless machine learning training uh, took some time to profile the entire framework for this model. And then based on that one, it was able to figure out the configurations. So even though we have lar larger training cost uh, on the left-hand side, which means like our framework takes longer, uh, like higher cost for training this model. But uh, if you look at the uh, uh, lo longer time to the training the model, but on the left-hand side, when we look at the cost, we can improve the cost by either four times when we compare with the uh, uh, Cyrus and eight times when we compare with Siren. So this shows the effectiveness of our framework by, and, 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 and on the other hand, Cyrus and Siren are not even uh, uh, like, you know, considering uh, uh, they're completely oblivious of these user-centric deployments. That's why they are not able to meet the uh, requirements, uh, either beat cost or beat, beat uh, training time budget. Uh, next, we are comparing the communication background, so breakdown. So we want to see what exactly is happening in all of these different frameworks. So first of all, let's look at uh, ResNet 50 with serverless machine learning training, right? So we have four different uh, values in our plot. The first one is upload shards. So basically, this time denotes the time when every worker uploads the shards into the global storage. And then we have download shards when every worker will download an individual shard of all the other workers. And then we have uh, download grads, which basically every worker upload grade, sorry, upload aggregated, every worker will upload the aggregated shards to the global storage. And then we have the download grads where every worker will form the global model by downloading the grads from all the other workers. So as we can see that for the ResNet 50, as we increase the number of workers, there is a slight increase in overall communication time in, in SMILT. But it's all performed Cyrus, even though both Cyrus and serverless machine learning training are utilizing the same storage mechanism, which is Redis based storage mechanism. But our oral communication pattern or the way we are utilizing or we, the way we are aggregating the, the gradients by utilizing all the workers involved in the training process significantly improves the training uh, uh, communication compared to Cyrus. Siren performs the worst in all three of them because of two main reasons. The first reason is it takes, uh, first of all, uh, too much, uh, uh, too much. Uh, it, 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 it takes uh, 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 an inefficient route for aggregating the model parameters by uploading all the parameters and then downloading all the parameters on a single worker. And the other one is it's also utilizing a, a slower storage system compared to uh, our uh, compared to our. Uh, 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 Cyrus and Siren, which is Redis based system. We also compared the performance of our uh, model in 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 terms of in, in terms of uh, 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 storage system, right? So we implemented the same communication patterns in using Redis as well as S3. So uh, the only thing which is changing here is the background uh, storage system. So this shows that. With the use of S3, we are basically incurring significantly higher uh, uh, communication overhead compared to Redis-based storage system, which takes much less time uh, compared to S3. So, so the main reason here S3 takes longer time for, for uh, the communication mechanism is because it runs uh, in the background multiple uh, consistency algorithms, multiple availability algorithms. That makes it much slower compared to Redis-based storage systems, which are in-memory key value stores. And uh, like one of the benefits Redis gives us compared to S3 is that it minimizes our overall communication time. And it also helps us minimizing the total duration of the training time that helps us significantly reduce the total cost. Uh, uh, as, as we know that like, you know, serverless functions are usually, serverless functions are usually uh, 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 cost, uh, like built based on the total duration of the, the function. That means by, utilize, by decreasing the overall communication time, we are decreasing the overall uh, uh, duration of the function that helps us improving the cost. Next, I'll briefly, basically, I, I don't think I have enough time, but I'll briefly touch upon some of the concepts we are, uh, some of the work we, we have done uh, on the serving part of the machine learning applications. So cloud service providers are uh, basically offering various uh, applications uh, for like, you know, serving applications such as, and they have like specific uh, uh, hard hardware or architectures for supporting machine learning training and serving systems. 
systems. So in this particular uh, part of the presentation, I will basically focus on speech and natural language based uh, systems. And I'll talk about some of the key challenges related to these two. And then we will be basically talking about the serving uh, speech and natural language processing uh, systems. So uh, Amazon AWS uh, uh, SageMaker basically supports all of these different uh, machine learning related tasks, such as inference, such as training. So one of the key things is they have a load balancer in the background, which could basically adopt based on your workload intensity. So and ideally, your workload or your, your nodes or your number of nodes which are serving your request should be changing based on your workload intensity. As the workload intensity increases, it should increase the number of workers and it should decrease as the number of intensity decreases. But uh, in case of uh, SageMaker, it takes a little bit of time to observe the workload intensity and then based on that one, it changes the overall uh, 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 scalability of the uh, uh, scalability of your uh, serving nodes right so it, it's it's another thing is it's coarse grain and then there are like too many para tuning parameters for example this screenshot shows the different parameters which are required to be uh, uh, tuned by the machine learning developer to for efficient serving systems for example one of the key things is like you know what which which node to use or which virtual machine to use the other characteristics are how many number of nodes you should use and like what should be your observation window all of these different characteristics are basically machine learning developers have to uh, develop uh, or, or employ to so for efficient serving systems so we did some uh, evaluation studies in this case uh, where we are comparing uh, SageMaker with serverless uh, settings. Uh, so we are using bare metal serverless. So here in this case, we are using Twitter trace analysis, uh, Twitter traces, which shows uh, a bursty arrival. That means we can show see these spikes, multiple spikes in, in, in the workload intensity during different times of the day. And then we are using, first of all, we, uh, we evaluated the scalability of our uh, systems between two different systems. The first one is the SageMaker, which shows the number of instance counts on the right-hand side and the concurrent function in the lambda function on the left-hand side. We can see that the serverless functions can uh, basically follow the same trend as uh, the workload intensity, while on the other hand, SageMaker relatively remains flat and, uh, and, and basically does not uh, scale very well. Next, we are basically comparing the, the latency variations as the workload intensity changes. One of the key things you notice here is as the, we can compare the, uh, as, the, as there is a spike in the workload intensity, we see a spike in, in the latency uh, in, in, in SageMaker as well. The key reason for there, this is it, SageMaker takes some time to scale the, uh, the resources based on the workload intensity. So that's why we can see as the workload intensity increases, there is a spike and SLO violations. And then finally, we compare the cost. So in the cost comparison, even though SageMaker is not scalable, Lambda provides agility, it's still costly compared to SageMaker. Like this is bare metal uh, AWS Lambda, which basically does not have any uh, additional uh, solutions to that. That's why it's much costly. So the key takeaway from these uh, studies is that Lambda is agile, but costly, and infrastructure as a service is a slow uh, uh, in scaling, but uh, cheaper. So. Some of the characteristics for machine learning serving systems are it should support bursty workloads. It should generate. It should be able to guarantee a solo requirement regardless of the workload intensity. It should have minimum resource provisioning. It should be easy to deploy and it should be cost effective, right? So one of the solutions, one of the papers, uh, this paper was published in uh, uh, SC 2020. So the solution we offered for uh, uh, vision-based application is that we should uh, uh, we should employ or we should uh, enable batching in serverless functions so that we can and take advantage of parallelism and throughput that will help us improve the overall performance of the serverless platforms. And we showed that by, in, by enabling batching on serverless, we could improve the cost compared to uh, uh, SageMaker. So our key idea was to use the buffer to hold the requests and then dynamically update the batching size, batch size and batching uh, batch size timeout values as well as the memory allocations to each workers. Uh, as as the based on the workload intensity, so that we can improve the cost. So this could work uh, for for vision based applications where you have uh, a, a, the, the 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 you have the deterministic service time for all the requests because all the requests are the same size. Either it's an image of uh, 224 by 224 or like uh, 28 by 28 or any image which is basically standard size. You do pre processing, but on the other hand. 
this basically is a challenging part when you are doing this for uh, 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 speech-based applications where your request sizes are varying in size. So when you, if, for example, in this case, if you wanna uh, serve the request of two different sizes, uh, which is uh, hello and hi, you have to pad the smaller request uh, uh, and then make it to the largest size, which basically is incurring uh, additional overhead. It improves the throughput, but it has additional computation overhead. So eventually, like, you know, these are some of the challenges we are trying to solve in this problem. Uh, I think due to the time, I will uh, not go into the details. So I will uh, skip towards uh, the conclusion as we are almost uh, at the end of our duration. So basically what we have shown here is that uh, our proposed systems can adapt to the dynamic nature of a training as well as the serving systems and using elastic nature of serverless can efficiently lead to significant benefits such as low system provisioning overheads, low costs, as well as uh, dynamic uh, resource provisioning. All of these benefits can be reaped by utilizing serverless benefits. These are the key takeaways. And with that, I will basically conclude my presentation. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask. Thank you. Thank you, Tarasan. Yeah, we are open to the questions from the audience. Uh, so maybe I can ask one or two questions. Um, also, previously we did uh, have a, a guest uh, from Google, who works on uh, natural language processing, mm -hmm. in particular machine translation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he was uh, one of the authors in this paper called G Shard. Mm -hmm. uh, so, do you know anything uh, about that particular work? I think it was published in a machine learning uh, conference, I, I Clear. Uh, so, I'm just curious about here you mentioned your serverless solution. Is this a component in those particular solutions, or it is a more general uh, term? I can also share uh, and, the paper if yeah. you like. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> that'd be great. I I haven't read the paper. I I, I am afraid, uh, but. Yeah, so the main, I think the the main idea, I we, the main inspiration for utilizing this uh, sharding based approach was uh, we worked on a, a federated learning uh, paper right before this paper, and then we saw this pattern where we could basically update the models in a different fashion, and we are sharding the data. So, and then another thing was uh, the model parallelism, where you are also like you know training different parts of the model in different locations you're trying to concatenate mm -hmm. them so like you know we kind of combine these two different ideas into one in this particular implementation to solve the bottleneck problem communication bottleneck problem in, in, in this uh, yeah mm -hmm. and uh, i have also uh, another question so you have listed different uh, type of uh, properties that uh, uh, effective system should process but you didn't mention uh, privacy, which is quite uh, important nowadays. So can we also add that to your list? Uh, and especially uh, you uh, presented the serverless solution. So uh, immediately I think of this uh, blockchain uh, like uh, infrastructures, can those type of things can be integrated into your system? That that is a very a very good question actually yeah so uh, like for the privacy part I think serverless would not be ideal candidate for privacy solutions because you you I mean like at this point I'm not aware that like you know if they have come up with a solution but, but I think you, somehow you leave behind some of your information in the serverless containers which is not ideal right and then it's, mm -hmm. it's yeah it's it's a little bit ideal until unless you have uh, like you know. I think nowadays people are moving like to for the secure machine learning based systems, SGX for uh, like training machine learning system in SGX based systems where you can hide the computation of, of your model and you can also encrypt your uh, data, training data. So I, I came across some of the papers which are utilizing these kind of solutions for privacy preserving machine learning solutions. And federated learning is also another area where like, you know, it's gaining much popularity nowadays to improve the privacy of machine learning models. I think this would not be an ideal candidate for uh, privacy preserving machine learning. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Yeah, Özgün Hocam. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, first, thank you uh, Ahmet for the excellent talk. So you mentioned about the federated learning, uh, but the work that you presented SMLT is not based on that assumption, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. The federated learning model, uh, but you assume the data is at the central storage and it is distributed to the number of workers that you determine. Yeah, so, uh, do you have plans to adopt it to federated learning? If not, uh, what are your current uh, FL relate related research? Yeah, that's a very good question as well. Thank you, Uznur. Yeah. Uh, so, so first of all, uh, I, I think this would our assumption is that we have a centralized storage system where we can accumulate the data. So that is the basic assumption. And the other thing is like the, for the future plans, uh, I think we did another uh, like we did have another paper on uh, on on uh, federated learning for privacy preserving, but that was not related to privacy preserving. Uh, uh, that was related to how to manage the heterogeneity of uh, of 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 uh, federated learning uh, devices in a federated learning like even though this could be this this like you know you can implement several space uh, federated learning systems but the thing is you have to encrypt the data and then once you utilize the data for training you have to destroy the data that is one of the problems so there are key challenges are how if you transmit the data over the network it might be interrupted over the network so that is the key vulnerability right there so i i think that could be another problem another one particular solution is that if the serverless based environments are implemented on an edge device then it could basically help uh utilize the federated learning based environments because then we will be able to train the models on the edge computing using the serverless platforms and then we will not have to transmit the data all the way to centralized location and then we will have the aggregators uh, available in the centralized location. We will, we will only get the uh, uh, gradients, uh, uh, like uh, obscured gradients uh, in terms of, and then we can do these updates in a centralized location. Uh, did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, we can thank to uh, our speaker. Yeah, thanks, uh, Asan. This was really, really interesting talk. Thank you, Akutu Jain. Thank you, Nurja, for the invitation. I really enjoyed uh, talking to all of you. It was really fun. And I see some of my mm -hmm. colleagues. I see Muge here. We used to take the algorithm class uh, from Abdel uh, Kinuja. Mm -hmm. Hi, Muge. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much for the talk. Of course, you're welcome. Okay, uh, so see you next week. Uh, Thank you.